This is the weekly sales meeting for April 30th, 2023. My name is Chris Fleming. You can reach me at chris at cdmediaconsulting.com or go to our website at cdmediaconsulting.com. Today's topic, simple upsell techniques. The upsell is something that is second nature to the service industry. Customer service reps at many retail outlets are taught the art and timing of the upsell. If you walk into a Verizon or AT&T store to buy a phone, the CSR will ask you if you want a case or a charger with that phone. There is a high probability that you will want one of those things, but you might not act upon your desire unless someone asks you to buy it. It is still a voluntary sale, but you need the suggestion to trigger the action. You might not think of it on your own. When you order a hamburger, McDonald's employees are trained to ask you if you want to supersize it or add an apple pie. They might even ask you if you want an ice cream cone, provided their machine is working. Waiters and waitresses are taught to ask about cocktails. They introduce the wine list, dessert, or add on extras to raise the average ticket. The higher the ticket, the higher the expected gratuity. It is a matter of self-preservation. Yet there are a lot of businesses and business sellers who are content to make the sale. They don't want to make the extra ask. They don't want to present the add-on opportunity. They don't think about the long game. They fail to recognize the opportunity in the ask. It is this upsell technique we can use to help our average ticket and depth of assortment. It works when we recognize those already doing business with us are more likely to do more business with us, if only they are given the opportunity. It is taking advantage of the apex of interest. It is the psychology of positive suggestion related to this upsell method. It is a nudge to those who have already declared they are going to do business with you. People already in the mindset of doing business with you have less resistance when presented with extra chances. When you make more offers, your chances of adding a product or service are greater. This is when the mind is predisposed to do business with you. We could effectively increase our total volume by at least 20% by applying this technique. Is there anyone who would not take an extra 20% in billing every month? Let's think about this from a retailer's point of view. The next time you go into your local grocery store, take a look at all of the items near the checkout counter. Why are they there? They are simple items that can be accessed at checkout. Remember, people already predisposed to doing business with you are more likely to do so. Present them the opportunity to add to their purchase. This is suggested at the point of impact when you are about to check out. There are two ways for us to be more successful. One is to get more customers to do business with us. The other is to get more of our customers to buy another product or service. The second one is easier as the consumer mindset has already arrived. If we can get one more thing sold to each customer, we could dramatically improve our business. Customers are generally not going to buy something unless someone suggests it. That someone could be us. The converse is also true. Once we finish the first transaction, its final value acts as an anchor for future deals. Whatever that number happens to be will become the future value of all contracts. That is, unless we stretch the field. If we don't introduce the extra options in the first sale, the chance of converting them in the future is diminished. Your forehead gets assigned the magical number of that first deal, and it is in permanent ink. That is the anchor position you will fight against in the future. It is best to expand the universe on the front end rather than risk the pricing stagnation that comes later. You give yourself flexibility by suggesting add-ons. Think about how Amazon.com works on you at checkout. The suggestion box opens and says, people who have bought this have also bought this. It is that simple. It is while you are in the process of checking out and buying. They pique your curiosity. They tempt you with extra offerings that others, like you, have bought. That is something we could put in place. We could keep track of what additional offers others buy from us and have them at the ready. When we are closing the sale, introduce what others have purchased. It can be as simple as you know. The last three people who have bought this have also included this other thing. Adding that to our sales conversations could change our fortunes. Step one is creating an Amazon-like suggestion box for purchasers. Have it at the ready when the customer is ready to check out. Do it when the customer is signing the order. Mention that others like them have also added a special event to enhance their buy. Give them the opportunity to purchase right then and there. Tell them what it can do and how it can enhance what they are buying. No one is ever mad when they get to see everything you have. They are mad when they find out they could have purchased it from you, but you didn't tell them about it. What would happen if one out of three purchased the suggestion? You won't know if you don't ask. 
The second upsell method would be operating like a supermarket. We could start by being a little creative. Put yourself in the customer's shoes. What would be a neat, special add-on to the purchase? What could we position as almost a necessity? What are the one, two, or three items you could offer at checkout? These items are the ones that could provide the most benefit to your customers. Have those at the ready. Know what those offers are or have them with you. Be able to explain their direct benefit in one or two sentences. You are not reciting war and peace. This is USA Today, not Wall Street Journal. Make it simple and easy to understand and explain to the customer like they're a six-year-old. Third would be to have an option to supersize everything. Take a page from McDonald's University. I have a simple supersize offer which I write into the final contract. I offer this to my advertising customers. It is to double their advertising frequency for $1 each from midnight to 5 a.m. I write an extra line into my final agreement. This line calculates the cost of the upsell. It generates a number that is an upgrade from the initial offer, but simple to understand. It is also a fixed number based on the total number of commercials. It costs me nothing to ask for this little add-on, and I only get one chance to make it happen. That is at the initial close. Once that opportunity is gone, it is gone. But when I get the yes, I can keep it forever. It is that anchoring position I have used to my advantage rather than to my detriment. The conversion rate on this supersize ask is about 40% or two out of five. I have added value to my product, added frequency to my offer, and got a direct benefit to my client, my product, and my wallet. Not bad for a one sentence ask. Pick one of these methods and use it at the close. It doesn't mean you have to do the same thing every time. Do one of the three options. You don't have to try all of them. Pick a strategy, but have one ready. You will be asking at the right time, which is when the consumer is most excited about their buy. When they have agreed to do business with you is the perfect time for the suggestion. When you are writing up the order, show them the bonus opportunity. Notice I said opportunity, not a freebie. This is not a gift with purchase. This is an opportunity for upset. Selling. Your customer is in the mindset of spending money. This is when reluctance is minimal or non-existent. People want to buy but do not want to be sold. You are not selling at this point but offering extra opportunities to buy. Your chance of success will never be better. It is the closest thing to a sure thing in sales. Once that client has an opportunity to be distracted by other things, that chance is lost. Be unique in your approach to every customer, but look for that one other thing they could add to their order. This takes a bit of planning when you make your offer, but you should be doing that anyway. If you are in the consultative sales business, be one. Take time to recommend the proper solution. When you craft the solution, look for positive reinforcement techniques like peer validation to clinch the deal. Offer special add-ons to enhance the offer, or give them a chance to supersize it right at the close. Some might say this is impossible, but don't knock it until you try it. This technique, like others we talk about, takes some practice. Work on it. Plan it out. Practice your words so they seem like the most natural thing in the universe. Spend this coming month working on selling one extra product or service in a presentation. When you get to the ask, do it so it sounds like a natural conclusion and goes with the solution. Do it when they are in the frame of mind to do business with you. Before you know it, more customers will commit to something else and you have increased your business. If you are unsuccessful, you've lost nothing. You will have gained an opening to revisit the opportunity. The ones you don't upsell, you will have planted the seed of another product or service that can help your business clients. It may not be this time, but the next time that you're able to upsell them. If you don't do it, it will be harder to introduce in the future. These are simple upselling techniques that your customers are accustomed to hearing. They hear them at restaurants, retail outlets, and Amazon.com. You know, the other places as they spend money, now they can hear them from you. Practice these methods and have them at the ready. Use the Amazon shopping cart, use the supermarket checkout, or use the supersize to your advantage. One of the ways to be successful in sales is by getting your current customers to spend more. Think of it like a server in a restaurant. When you raise the average ticket, you raise the expected rate of gratuity. You can do that with one of these three methods. Like cell phone cases or chargers, people want to buy them but need to be asked to make the purchase. People will make additional purchases from you, but it doesn't work if you don't ask. My book, Yes, I'm a Salesman, You Can Be Too, is now available at Amazon.com. If you like what you have heard here today, please consider ordering a copy or two. You can always send one to a friend. Go to cdmediaconsulting.com right now and follow the instructions to order.